All right, everyone, it's time for occult literature, video number 147, Hypnotism by Delords. It's got an inordinately long subtitle, so I'm not going to bother reading it out. 112 pages, so it's a decent length work. Uh, as always, link in the description to my edition of this work on Amazon. Now, second and third links are to my books, blogs. If you're into sort of the, the psychic, seance, Victorian style occultism and parapsychology sort of stuff, there are some other titles available, and I think I have two other Delorence works, including... Uh, uh, the one that I just uh, did on crystal gazing, which was quite good, but that's more mysticism. That's more related to the actual occult. This is more almost the history of medicine. Now, uh, interestingly enough, this book may contain the earliest literary reference. It's the earliest I've seen uh, to, the, to the now outdated and largely disproven concept that was being tested at the time in the Victorian era of trying to hypnotize large groups of people using like spinning wheels. You know, the pinwheels, you spin it around and it's like a, a thing in cartoons where some character is trying to hypnotize another and they hold up like a spinning wheel and the other person's, their eyes start spinning around. That of course doesn't actually work. It's just gonna give you vertigo or make you sick or something. But this may contain the earliest literary reference to what became a, a common cartoon trope. I remember it from like Ed, Ed, and Eddie and all the, the Courage the Cowardly Dog and every other cartoon has hypnotism in it at some point. Scooby-Doo. Uh, so that's rather interesting, but that's just sort of an aside. What's valuable about this particular work, unlike some of DeLorence's works that are more expounding theory, talking about principle, this one contains a great deal of how-to material. For instance, and this actually apparently works, you can hypnotize a chicken using a chalk line and holding its face down to it or by drawing a line with your finger from its face along the ground. Apparently it messes with the chicken's equilibrium or something and causes it triggers their fight or flight reaction or something and can be used to move them from one area to the other without recollection. So you can move your chickens from one coop to another and it doesn't cause stress. And I guess farmers used to do this. They'd like literally be mesmerizing their chickens. It also explains that there's a difference between mere suggestion and hypnotism at large. Different stages of hypnotism it goes into how to induce those mainly for medical purposes. Now, we know uh, this particular text claims that it can help with all sorts of things, pain, insomnia, addiction, uh, among other things, childbirthing. We now know that that's in the homeopathic sense, it is, can be useful, not on all people and not to an extreme degree, but it can be useful. Uh, hypnotism nowadays is mostly relegated to, to psychology, to psychological disorders, and I'll tell you why. And DeLorence unwittingly uh, lays the groundwork uh, for this concept. He's claiming that the mental state can't be changed really by drugs. Uh, therefore, you have to change the mental state to truly get over something like insomnia related to stress, cigarette addiction, uh, alcohol addiction, or, or opium, <laughs> which is common at the time or something. Of course, now we know that pills can, you know, take care of things. Um, and so it may make more sense to take a pill. People prefer to take a pill. It's very simple, even if it doesn't always work uh, or it's even less effective. It's more simple and it's also in a pharmaceutical sense, it's more profitable. Pharmaceutical company doesn't want to uh, give out hypnotism because it can't really market it. You can hypnotize someone, I can hypnotize someone. Scott Adams hypnotizes people, it seems, on a regular basis. You can't really market that. You could say, well, I'm a hypnotist, but if some other random person can read a book and learn how to do it too, that sort of defeats your monopoly. It's not the same as pharmaceuticals. There's a reason why it falls out of favor around the time of the military industrial complex's rise. Trust me, it's definitely money related. Uh, it's sort of like culinary arts or anything else that died out. But this is an excellent work. Some of these methods do work uh, and others presumably can at least hit or miss. He makes the claim that a good operator of hypnotism can, can mesmerize upwards of 90% of anyone. Um, that depends on how receptive they are to sitting there and being hypnotized. Of course, you can't just walk up to someone on the street and wave your hands a little bit and instantly hypnotize them. And this ties into propaganda, the concept of elocution, you know, the movement. Uh, it ties into ASMR to an extent, I'm, sh I'm sure. Some of that is explicitly mesmerism. Much of it is explicitly suggestion. Some of the naughty ASMR is like a financial control fetish stuff. It's all tied together, trust me, and I've already overlapped. I wrote a work on ASMR, how it overlaps with things like the serpent fire, ASMR and the occult. Um, hypnotism is something that I probably should include in the, the eventual third edition. I do intend to write a third and final version of it, 
Uh, because as I encounter more material, I encounter more overlap between that basic phenomenon and other things spoken of within an occult or parapsychological context. Uh, so this is an excellent work by Delors, highly recommended. Now, if you're interested in hypnotism, you won't find any other pre-modern work that I know of that covers it in as much depth. It will also, it'll actually tell you how to do it. Now, there is a 30s era manuscript. I have a physical copy. Um, I can't remember exactly what the title was. I think it was How to Hypnotize Your Friends. It was one of those old pulp paper things from the 30s that were so common. From the middle of the 20s through the early 40s, they were, they were all the rage. Uh, but it's not quite as good. Uh, DeLorence's work is definitely better. That's about all. Peace out.